Sign in number three complete for Norwich City. Shane Duffy arrives on a, a three year deal, a free transfer from Fulham, but he doesn't obviously hasn't really played a lot at Fulham. So, with that, we're going to get some insight from his spell at Brighton. And with that, delighted to be joined by Jeremy Smith, a football writer and Brighton fan. Um, thanks for joining me at late notice, Jeremy. Uh, of course, had a bit of an issue there on my camera as well. So, um, we put this off a, a little bit longer than it needed to be. Um, yeah, I just want to get your take on, on Shane Duffy and his spell at, at Brighton. I mean, uh, 150 appearances, 109 of those in the Premier League, <coughs> nine goals as well, and it, it feels like he had a pretty pretty decent spell at Brighton. So I suppose what what, what was that spell like for him? Yeah, really good spell. He was. Um, we signed him the year that we, or the summer just after we just missed out on promotion. I think he was our record transfer at the time, and I think a lot of people weren't too impressed. I don't think he'd had the best time at Blackburn or they'd had a really poor season the year before, I think. Um, so it wasn't sort of the, yeah, the, the signing that was kind of met with the, the biggest celebration, but he, he was, he was brilliant for us. Like he slotted in, um, you know, he and Dunk became such a brilliant partnership um, in the promotion season. And then the first couple of years um, in the Premier League under Chris Hutton as well. Um I think it was under Potter and the very, you know, the change in the style of football that that sort of made him lose his place a little bit. I think, you know, rightly or wrongly, I think a little bit harshly, but I suppose it's generally true to say he's a sort of archetypal British centre back and not so much, you know, cultured footballer, passer of the ball, anything like that. So I think when Potter came in and, you know, sorry, he, so he really suited the, the Hewton style of play, which is, you know, all about keeping it tight at the back, um, you know, relatively neg negative style and, you know, hope, hope to hit the other team on the break. When we changed to Potter and a much more expansive style, there was always a chance he was going to sort of lose his place. And he went to Celtic had an absolute nightmare there by all accounts, but then came back and fought his way back into the team, which I think says a lot about his character as as well as his actual footballing ability. So, yeah, when he left Brighton, it was very much as a sort of, I was going to say cult hero. I mean, he was a cult hero, but I feel like that sometimes does a player a disservice because it often sort of means, you know, they weren't the best player. They were just like a character or something like that. But he, 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 did you know he did the business on the pitch for us and I think he was yeah he's very very fondly remembered now yeah 31 years old not played much in the last couple of seasons but um it feels like maybe the leadership is the route that Norwich City have gone down and why they've recruited him what was his leadership like at Brighton was he a big influence on the rest of the squad yeah I think so I mean at the time there were a few characters a few sort of elder statesmen there and like I said obviously Lewis Dunk right alongside him um but um yeah, I think he led the way sort of in terms of, I guess, example. I mean, there's always kind of stories about, uh, you know, you could go to certain Irish pubs in the centre of town and maybe find him there. But on the pitch, he was never found wanting and, and you know, st stuck his head where it hurts at both ends of the pitch. Um, and, you know, again, as I suppose as a kind of archetypal centre-back, the kind of player that, you know, it might even be an element of fear, but people were, you know, really happy to sort of follow him. And, and as I said, a big character as well, a good laugh. Um, even like, you know, I think his dad passed away a couple of years ago, which I think probably affected a little bit his time at Celtic, certainly. But even his dad, like, you know, became a sort of Brighton hero for, for his interaction on social media. So, yeah, he really sort of, you know, was invested in, in the club and everything about it. Yeah, I just want to sort of maybe get the, the best and worst attributes he's got. You kind of spoke there a little bit about maybe playing that from the back. Not necessarily a strength, but certainly it feels like aerially he's he's a very good defender. And just definitely in the championship, he feels like he could be a, a player that's really useful to Norwich City. Yeah, I mean, that that that's the main thing. You know, he and Dunk together, really brave defenders, willing to throw their body in front of everything. A lot of blocks, but yeah, brilliant in the air. You know, repel crosses all day long pop up at the other end with some important goals as well um so and you know a few decent finishes with, it, with his feet as well i think he scored a very good goal against man united at one point actually but mainly mainly in the air that's definitely his strength and then the tackling as well but i suppose weaknesses 
he was never the quickest. So at 31, he's not going to be getting any quicker. So, um, you know, he works better in a, in a defense that plays relatively deep. So he's not going to sort of get turned and have to kind of sprint back to his goal too much. And then, yeah, if you're looking for a really expansive passing out from the back, you're not going to get that from him, but you know, he's good enough to be able to, to thread a, a short ball to, to his fellow defender or, you know, if a midfielder makes space in front of him. Yeah, it feels like certainly the fact he's played with Grant Hanley and Adron Bamadeli before will, will be handy for, for Norwich. Um, just sort of talking about his injury history, I know Norwich have a, a track record recently of signing players that maybe don't necessarily have the rest uh, record in terms of injury. So has he ever really been a player that's sort of, you know, dealt a, a big blow in terms of injuries or has he been pretty consistent in, in terms of, you know, being a regular uh, available every week? From memory, nothing major definitely the first two or three years at Brighton he played over 30 matches I think that the last couple there were some injury niggles and I don't you know I suppose it's a little bit circular were there injury niggles because there was more competition or because there's more competition he wasn't playing week in week out and maybe that that sort of aggravated injuries I don't know so no no sort of really major things no sort of you know knee ligament tears that you need to worry about but a 31 year old who's very physical i suppose you are going to get niggles the older he gets yeah and then just sort of back connection with fans i mean a lot of norwich fans feel like you know a strong connection with players on the pitches is always a good thing in terms of unity and, and pushing for promotion what was this sort of what was he like off the pitch you know he sort of spoke there about sort of you know the element with his dad and stuff previously so i suppose what what's the connection been like with the brighton fans you know was that really really strong yeah, really strong. I think he, you know, he's one of those players who really wears his heart on his sleeve. Um, he plays like he really, really cares week in, week out. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that, as I said, you know, hopefully if he if he sort of settles quickly and, and kind of adopts the club and the club adopts him, then um, I think, you know, he'll really play his heart out and it will be obvious that he does that. Um you know, I think a good sense of humour as well in interviews or post-match celebrations, that kind of thing always helps as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I I think, you know, maybe Celtic was, he probably, as much as anything, put a lot of pressure on himself because of the sort of, um, you know, Irish connection and Irish background. I think it was sort of his, maybe his boyhood club. So um, it's really a shame that it didn't work out, but you wonder if maybe there was an even element of sort of trying too hard. But um, yeah, certainly at Brighton, the fans, like I said, it, even if there was a little bit of scepticism at first, they really adopted him and, and he he played his heart out, you know, celebrated as much as anyone else when we got promoted, the big results that we got in the Premier League as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely, I think it'll be fun having him around. And then, yeah, just finally, just speaking about kind of the, the fact he's not played now for a couple of seasons, has that really ever been an issue for him if he's had spells out? Has he come back stronger? You know, is, is he sort of a player that will give you 100% on the pitch regardless? I think so, yeah. I mean, like I said, the time at Celtic, he was, I think, in and out of the team. I don't know if it was injuries or bad form or a bit of both. But he came back to Brighton. I think we were all expecting him to leave straight away. And, and even if he stayed around, certainly just be a squad player. And it helped that Potter played three at the back. But he really forced his way straight into the team. In the first couple of matches, I think man of the match performance, a goal, and then he was difficult to drop. So, um, you know, coming out of a, a really sketchy season there, he immediately sort of fitted straight back in really quickly into a team and a style of play that he wasn't expected to be any part of. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think it shows his his um, sort of adaptability and bounce back ability, if you like. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Really do appreciate your time this uh, early afternoon. Of course, there you go. Norwich City's third signing through the door. Interesting to see what it's you know going to happen. A lot of these players come with, I suppose, a little bit of expectation about what they've done in the past, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily work out. But certainly optimistic that Shane Duffy can be a, a strong addition to Norwich City.